Logan Kane here, and this is Zulima. My world was dying. I was called forth by one of the nine gods to set sail for Shulima, their homeland, where no mortal had ever tread. But they had already abandoned it, and their new lords awaited my arrival to claim my soul. One thing I've noticed right away with this game is that the frame rate is awful. But anyway, we have the deluxe edition of the game. And I did play it briefly. I didn't really do anything. So deep was I sleeping that I felt as if I were drowning in the darkness and silence, as if time itself had stopped. I was on the Isle of Brina, far from the great war that consumed the Grand Continent. But it seemed interesting enough to do a video, so I heard here a we voice are. whispering in my ears, and I felt as if my body was being lifted up. I could not open my eyes, but I could see the firmament clearly, as if I had been pulled up to the stars. Galvin, hear the voice of Goblot, the architect. The master of dreams and constructor of matter. The world is in agony. The guardian of souls is gaining power over the lords of Shurima. Our strength diminishes. I have watched you from the stars. I have chosen you to be my herald, my hand on earth. You must complete the mission I am giving you. Eradicate the evil that profanes the divine temples of the Creators. Gather your party and sail to Shulima, where no other men from the West have set foot. Let the currents of Naliet and the breath of Taliet guide you to your destiny. The voice trailed into the stars like a whisper carried away on the winds. Finally, I was able to open my eyes. Had it all been a dream? I wished it were so, but I knew it was real. Okay. A fighter cannot remain in the back row. Bl 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 Alright, last time I did a quick start when I was just messing around with it, but we're going to go ahead and create a custom party. So this could take forever. And if it becomes too droll, I'll probably fast forward through it. Otherwise, this will probably be the entirety of this first video. I still don't know anything about the game, so this should be fun. Alright, in order for the journey to start, you have to create five characters who will accompany Gwalan in his travels. Alright. So we have Gwalan. Have to be a man. So that's good. What if I generate a random character? Alright, we're going to go ahead and remove that guy. Yeah. Let's see. Let's make... Let's make a female. Ooh, she's... Now that one looks pretty cool. Ugh. That's an inbred peasant. She looks pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and make a female warrior. Let's go with this one. Wow, there are quite a few classes. What we got? Arcane soldier, mage, thief. Oh my gosh. There's a lot to read. Divine summoner, cleric. Ooh, she might be a cleric. I like clerics. Let's see. Clerics are devoted to a deity and enjoy a unique com communion with their chosen god. So long as they are devoted... I wonder... Huh. I wonder if there's something I can do to become no longer devoted. They are able to manifest various divine powers in times of need. These powers can protect the group, repel wicked beings, and heal injuries. So, just a healing class? Mm. Then Barbarian. Barbarians are the most battle-hardened of warriors, wielding their instinct like a weapon. A barbarian's physical strength and stamina are unmatched, so it comes as no surprise that they rely on brute force rather than technique to overcome their foes. Even a lightly armored barbarian can be fairly difficult to take down. Well, yeah. So, I know there's a front row and a back row. The front row can attack with whatever, and the back row has to attack with pole arms or projectiles. Or probably magic. But I did say I want to make a soldier. Arcane soldiers believe that power is achieved through mystery of both steel and magic. 
While an arcane soldier cannot wear equipment as easily as a soldier, they make up for it by imbuing their weapon of choice with powerful elemental magic, allowing them to deliver blows which are effective against most enemies. And oh my god, that was two sentences long. <laughs> Alright. So they get 3 HP per level, clerics get 3 HP per level, barbarians get 6 HP per level. Well, that explains that. And then soldiers are 4, paladines, 3... Let's see the Divine Summoner. The Divine Summoner has a very special Divine Power, such that when he concentrates, he can bring the... They really should have put she whenever I'm making a she character and he whenever I'm making a male character. That'd be pretty cool. But anyway. He can bring the Heralds of Gods to Earth. These mythological beings act according to their own wills on behalf of the Summoner. Their physical existence is a brief and requires an immense power that few are able to master. So it's Divine Magic. They only get one HP per level. Oh my gosh. Those are weak guys. Thieves, despite their questionable origins, are masters in manipulation of mechanical objects and devices. They have an affinity towards picking locks as well as spotting and disarming lethal traps. In addition, the thief's cunning allows him to perceive secret doors and hidden switches, which most would miss. In combat, they favor fast tracks and mobility. Did I read the mage? Mages are learned and wise, able to understand both physical and elemental laws. They are adept at exploiting enemy vulnerabilities due to the wide array of spells at their disposal. While raging storms and inferno are within their fingertips, mages find it difficult to withstand the rigors of frontline combat. They get more HP than the damn summoner. Bards are musicians and singers with profound passion for songs which can inspire the group in combat or send the enemy down a spiral of madness. No strangers to the acquisition of gold, they also fairly good at appraising items. Good old soldier. Soldiers are warriors who have been trained in the wielding of weapons and execution of powerful techniques. Able to handle complex weapons with relative ease and equip the heaviest of armors, the soldier is a sturdy frontline combatant. Paladins are seen as divine soldiers and protectors of the people. They spend most of their time training for combat as they do worshipping their deity. The auras and blessings of a paladin brings him an invaluable to any group. I read that wrong. And I think that's everybody I've read. I want to go back. What is our main guy? He's a explorer. So he's not something that exists. We're going to go ahead and make a warrior. Straight up soldier. Our Atherinos. As Gilia. As Gilia. As Gilia, my baby. Which god does this character pray to? Oh my god, look at it. Okay, I thought there was a scrolling. Disciple of Nelet, the Lady of the Seas. She is a compassionate goddess who governs the tides of the oceans of the world. A single tear from Nelet can cause endless tidal waves to surge, while a single moment of joy may soothe the most rebellious seas. She is the most empathetic of all... Zulan... Zolnaria? Zolnari? Zolnari. I'm going with Zolnari. And cares deeply for each and every living creature. Maximum hit points up. The Lady of the Winds. Tell it world of cheerfulness and grace. Her eternal smile looks after the winds and clouds, gently guiding them across the land. However, should her mood change, so too shall the weather be altered. Warmth and sunlight can be swept away by terrible storms when Telet is angered. Disciple of Kurs Kurskit. The Lord of Stone and Earth. It was the most. Oh. Well, it was the powerful Kurskit who shaped the surface of the Earth into its present form. The many valleys, canyons, and mountains of Zuluma obey only the most stubborn of the Zulari, and none are as movable as Kurskit. I kind of slurred my M there. The Lord of Fire and Fury. So long as magma flows within the Earth's molten core, none can command Valvet. It was he who lifted the sun into the firmament and stroked the earth's inner flames. It is said his divine fury is mass manifested through erupting volcanoes. A sign that Volvet is by far the most temperamental and unpredictable of all the Zulnari. I'm really liking... Let's see, what is this? Hit points 5%. Combat speed 5%. Strength 3. Agility 4. Evasion 10. Combat Initiative 15, whole bunch of resistances, maximum power points, and experience gained. That one sounds useless. What do I want to do? Do I want more hit po What was this one again? 
Power points, that's right. I think I'm going to go with combat speed or initiative. Because both of those sound pretty awesome. The Lady of Nature, she is the caring mother of all that grows in the wilds and gave life to the world's flora when it was but a barren desert. Every single tree of Zulamia's forest is considered to be her sacred gift, passed down by the goddess herself. Hmm. Combat initiative is first round, but combat speed is... Combat speed. Yeah, I'm gonna go with combat speed. Oh, whoa, I still wanted to read the other ones. Did I read this one? The Lady of the Beasts. Fierce animals and other wild creatures are her children. Their instincts reflecting her personality. A free protective nature empowers Resonant with the spirit of an indomitable warrior. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna end this video before starting. That way, anybody that wants to skip all this bullcrap that I'm spouting, they can just skip straight to the gameplay. Disciple of Golot. The master of dreams and works. He is said to be the most clever god and possesses the power to control the mind of any creature of his choosing. He is also the architect and maker of the world. The divine temples and magical artifacts he has built have no equal amongst all other creations of the gods. I always find experience buff buffs to be kind of lacking. Because typically, it's... You're probably going to be... The game is built around not having that buff, so... The Lord of Radiance and Life. He rules over the stars and the firmament as the most powerful of all the Zular Zul Zulnari. Some would even go so far as to say he is the king of all Zunari. He alone possesses the ability to breathe life into the creations of the Lords of Zolima. The Lord of Darkness and Death. Yul is the guardian of souls who injects souls into new lives and then takes back those souls under custody when those souls' lives have come to an end. Well, that was fun to say. Alanet, his antagonist, is the only one who can match his power. Together, they compete, complete the cycle of life. Alanet? Oh, this guy. Alright, what do I go with? The uh, combat speed? Yeah, combat speed. She's gonna be a fastin. These are the weapon types this character can wield. Select one, and the character will start the adventure with a weapon of that type. I want her to be a badass. Does she want... She's gonna have a sword. She's gonna be a badass with a sword. Alright, new character time. This time, we'll make another woman. I can reuse the portraits? That's confusing. So what do we got for portraits? Uh, I guess she'd be a barbarian. Do I want to put a barbarian in, though? I want a female thief. So, I'm going to make a thief. No. 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 Magal. I like Magal. We'll go with Magal. You might just go with the... Agility. Agility sounds like a good idea. Because I, I would I would like to say that agility is probably something that'll help me dodge. And dodge sounds important. Although she's going to be a back row bandit. Ooh, I don't know. Do I want to start with a bow? Or daggers? Improves the abil character's ability to wield and hit with small, concealable weapons like daggers and knives. Such weapons allow their user to attack more often and typically apply additive bleed damage on a successful hit, although not as much as swords. Improves the character, but, you know, I was going to have her be a backline missile, but she's going to be a frontline thief. So my explorer, I don't know, I wish, wish I knew if he was soldier-like. Okay, so we need to make some back level guys. Let's make the, that guy looks like he's got something in his butt. That guy looks like he's putting something in somebody's butt. I think these two go together. Alright, so, same amount. What is that? I like the armor, but then the bald head thing kind of... Throws me off. That's a feminine dude. I'm gonna go with this one. Who do I want? This guy's gonna be a backline bandit. So, does he want to be a paladin? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make him a cleric, I think. Nantharos! It's like a spell. I think this guy is going to have either more power points... Or all these resistances. I think I'm going to go with power points. You. Oh, wait. I can't do that. Damn it. <laughs> so, who do I put in the back line at that point? Whatever. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. 
then another man, I think. This guy. Because I want a summoner. Summoning is some... Dingon? I'm going with Dingon. Alright, Disciple of the Forest. Oh, Evasion plus 10. Maybe that's what I should have done. Huh. Oh well. You, sir, are going to have a pole weapon. So that's one, two, three, four, five. You have to create five characters who will accompany. Can I do another one? Let's just click through just to see. Oh, I think I can. So I'm going to remove that guy. So in that case, we're going to make another woman. He likes to surround him. G Gan Gun or whatever his name is likes to surround himself with women. So we're going to go ahead and make a mage. An evil mage. She's going to be a bitch. Look at that. Seems like a good idea to have a mage. I have a thief. Yeah, we'll make the mage. Fingal? Makes me think of Sindel. Toldrick. Doesn't sound feminine. Can I press escape? Yeah, that makes it easier. Gaskar. Actually, you know what? Gasgula. Gasgula. That's what we're going to go with. She is definitely going to go the power one. That's Is that the power one? Yes. She's going to go with pole weapons as well. I wish to start with this group of six men. And then after this cutscene, we'll call it a day. It was said that it was to be the darkest and bloodiest age in the history of man. Or whatever this is. On the great continent of Rodinia, the two largest kingdoms began a great war that would drag every country and village into an endless stretch of death and chaos. Many begged and prayed to the gods for help, but the gods never answered. In the safety of Brina, a small island in the far east of Rodinia, the echoes of war thundered louder with each passing day. In those ill-fated times, those who govern our destiny decided that I, Gowlin the explorer and navigator, would do my part to shape history. So I was chosen by Golot, the master of works, to be his herald on Earth. In that time, I understood very little of the true meaning of those grave and profound words. The gods, who once lived on the lost continent of Shulima years ago, were engaged in battle with the Guardian of Souls. And as their power waned, the power of their enemies waxed. Golot commanded me to sail to Shulima, and once there, liberate the sacred temples of the Divine. Little hope remained in the world, as long as our Lord Protectors continued their battles beyond the distant stars. Without them, nothing could stop the ruin of Rodinia. And so, it was then that I gathered my allies and set sail from Brina to the east. The wind and the currents guided us across the vast ocean of Morovia. The clouds and the mists were our constant and only companions. Two weeks later, the clouds divided, and at last we felt the light of the sun once more. And there it was. Beyond the horizon, the land of legend. Shulima. Home of the creators. Well, I guess instead of zoo, which is what I thought that would be pronounced, it's Shu. Shulima. But I think that's it for episode zero of Shulima. Pretty sure it starts now. When a character is in, is in flames, stunned, asleep, or tangled in webs, you can use the help and ally skill to remove those conditions. This is taking a lot longer to load than it did the first time. Wonder if it's gonna load. If I lose all that effort of creating those characters, I'm going to be mighty sad. There it goes. And this just tells us how to move, and it's time to play the game. Alright, well, we'll go over this. Suddenly, you feel like something is vibrating below your feet. You look down and notice something is shining under a pile of dirt. It looks like an ancient medallion. When you touch it, you feel like... Yeah, you feel like its energy passes through your body. And for a moment, you're paralyzed. Seconds later, without knowing how the medallion is now hanging around your neck. Okay. Party receives the Talesman of Glut. 
Game saved. Auto, new game. All right, yes, that's it for episode zero of Shulima. If you guys like it, leave a like, do the stuff, whatever, don't care. Enjoy.